In this short video in my series on Primer and Permanova, I'm going to look at analysing environmental data. If you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you do that to understand the situation I'm working with. But in brief, I've got eight sample sites, four sampled in water about 50 metres deep, four in about 70 metres deep, and two of these are immediately adjacent to oil platforms leaking oil which is becoming incorporated into the sediment and I'm working with simulated data here for simplicity and I have a set of environmental and biological variables measured on each of these samples. So I've imported the environmental data into primer, depth, sediment particle size, nutrient concentration and hydrocarbon concentration. Doing the draftsman plot indicated that I needed to log transform hydrocarbons so I've done that and then as is usual with environmental data I've normalized the data and then finally I've calculated the resemblance matrix using the break uh, the Euclidean distance similarity measure. Now one of the routine things to do with environmental data in order to visualize the patterns of relationships is principal components analysis. So analyze, PCA, and then OK. And I'll just go back to the text results here. The aim of principal components is to try and represent the patterns in the data so that the first principal component accounts for a large proportion of the variation in the data. The second principal component accounts for the next largest proportion and so on. So you can see the first principal component here accounts for about 77% of the variation in the samples or in the sample space and the second accounts for another 18% so together those two account for 95% of the variation in the data and that means that the principal component plot is giving us a very good idea of what the relationships among the samples are. If I go to the graph itself in here then it's useful to modify this a little to make it easier to see. So data labels, I'll make the text a little bit smaller, 50%, and I'll add in some symbols to code by zone and location. Probably made the text a little bit too small. Okay, now what we can see here is clearly some separations in the data. So the north, far east and north, far west sites are grouping together and separate from all the other sites. Now these are the unpolluted or relatively little polluted samples to the far east and far west of the platform. The polluted samples are down here and both east and west are grouping fairly closely together. And all of these are the northern samples. The southern samples in the deeper water are all over here and again they're grouping separately. The east and west which are directly to the south of the platform are here and the far east and far west which are out to the far east and far west of the platform are over here. So we're getting four distinct groupings with the possibility of uh, some other groupings as well. So here Far East, Far East, Far East are all close together and the Far West are slightly separated from those and I think you can see that pattern elsewhere as well but the predominant pattern is North versus South and impact samples which are in pink and red separating out from the control samples which are receiving little pollution. The vectors on here indicate the direction in which those variables are changing. So hydrocarbon is increasing as we go down this way. So these are the samples with high hydrocarbon levels, those with lower ones. And in contrast in this grouping here, those have a lower hydrocarbon and these have higher. The other variables, sediment, depth and nutrients, are essentially correlated with patterns in depth. So sediment is increasing this way as we get into shallower water. We're getting larger particle sizes and nutrients increase this way as we get into deeper waters and we get finer particle sizes.
So in this particular diagram, we can clearly distinguish depth trends going this way across the diagram with hydrocarbon related trends going this way. Now there are other ways of visualizing this data, other ways of doing ordinations. So if I go to the resemblance matrix and per manover, there's PCO, principal co coordinate. And if I go OK there, essentially this diagram, especially when I modify it a little, is going to look pretty much exactly the same as the PCA. So you can see that there. Um, because of the PCO I've done here is done using a resemblance matrix based on Euclidean distance. The PCA implicitly uses Euclidean distance. So we would expect to get essentially the same results from these two ordinations. Now, so when I've got an ordination like this where the vectors are not automatically plotted, I can add those in. So right click again, go to special, and then this doesn't quite, all of this is not going to show up on the screen. I can go here, Worksheet Variables, and I can select the worksheet that I want to add in. So I'll use the uh, Environmental Normalized Pearsons and hit OK. And now I've added in vectors and the diagrams for the PCO and PCO are essentially similar. Suppose I'm interested in testing whether these groupings of samples are significantly different. The PCA is not a test, it's a representation, a diagram that allows us to interpret the patterns. The test we can do is permanova, and the first step is actually creating a permanova design. So I'll do that here, I'll give it a title. It has two factors, and the factors are already specified in the data file, they are zone, and location. Zone is north versus south and location is east to west across the map. So with the resemblance matrix selected, per manover, run the per manover, select the appropriate design and OK. And now let's look at the results. So up the top here we've got a summary of what we've done. Uh, we're using Euclidean distance. The design has two factors. And down here's the results. And the results are put out in a analysis of variance format and that's one advantage of the permanover procedure and we can do tests for differences among zones or between zones among locations and the interaction now all the p values here are less than 0 0.05 they're in fact all the same at 0 0.001 so all of these three tests are significant there is a significant difference between zones among locations and there is a zone by location interaction. Come back to that in a minute. It's important to remember that with per manover, the p values here do not come from the f distribution or any other distribution, but are generated by permutation. So that's why I've got p perm and unique perm over here. So the program runs around randomly rearranging the labels to determine statistically significant differences. Now what does that interactive term mean? It actually is quite clear on the PCO and the PCA. So if I go to the PCO, PCA, if we look here we can see that the north, far east and far west are quite widely separated from the north, west and east. So there's quite a big, big difference between the impact samples here that are just next to the platform and the control samples that are taken off to the left and right. When we go to the deeper water you can see that those samples are grouping more closely together. There still is a clear separation between the west east impact samples and the controls out to the far east and west but it's nowhere near as clear as it is up here. So that's why we're getting an interactive effect. The difference between the control and impact is getting smaller as we get into the deeper water. So what we've done so far is use PCA, sorry, with the data matrix selected we've used PCA to look at 
uh, an ordination to represent the patterns with the resemblance matrix selected and from the permanover menu we can do a PCO which because we're doing it on Euclidean distance is essentially going to give us exactly the same result and we can do a permanover to test for significant differences. Now in some cases permanover will detect significant differences that are not apparent in the PCA, PCO or even an MDS plot. There is a another procedure we can use in that case and that is this cap and the cap tries to do an ordination taking into account the design the structure of the data so down here I can select whether to look at zones on their own locations on their own or the combination of zone and location so I'll select that one and here's the cap it, it actually comes out looking again fairly similar if I flip it around a little bit it comes around looking fairly similar to the other diagrams and again that's not a great surprise and the pattern that's evident here is very similar to the pattern that's evident in the PCA and PCO in both the PCA and PCO the actual meaning of the interaction is quite clear so the cap doesn't add anything to what we can already see from those other ordinations. Okay that's a quick introduction to the types of analyses and ordinations and interpretations of environmental data we can do using permanover and primer. With, there's another set of analyses which involve relating or looking at relationships between biological and environmental data, but that will be the topic of another video.